Hello, my name is Kevin Kinderman and I'm with Corporation Service Company. I'm joined today by Scott Malfitano, CSC's Vice President of our Document Recording Division. Today Scott will talk with us about electronic document recording, e-recording, and he'll talk with us about where things are now and where we're heading in the future. Scott, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. Yeah, we're very excited to be here to talk to you both from the submitter side and also from the county clerk side as well. So, thank you. So let's jump right in. Mm -hmm. Electronic recording has been around for more than a dozen years in different recording jurisdictions across the country. Um, why haven't more recording jurisdictions adopted this process? And what are some of the benefits that they'd realize if they did? So as you indicated, Kevin, one of the things is that you know it's only been 12 years since uh, people have been e-recording. And actually, with the county clerks and the county recorders, you know, it's been hundreds of years that they actually accept these uh, documents, um, to accept them, to put them up for public access. Uh, you know, they've been the gatekeepers of those public documents for years. And right now, it also hasn't been a mandatory process that's in place. So there's 30 out of the 3,600 counties in the United States, uh, about 800 of them are now have accepted e-recording, um, and it has not been a mandatory process for anyone today. Um, there are some, there's seven states that haven't accepted or embraced the laws yet, or passed the laws, and some of those are the Uniform Electronic Transactions Law and also the Uniform Real Property Electronic Recording Law. Um, so I think once those are passed in those other states, um, there really should be no barriers to entry at all for everyone to embrace e-recording. Um, some of the advantages today of e-recording, I mean, they're significant. They're significant. Um, they reduce the costs for both the county and from the submitter. Um, it is actually they increase productivity. They shorten the uh, the recording timelines for for the process itself, um, and also they save uh, additional amount of time. So it's a quick, efficient, and very cost-effective process. Great. So, what about the submitters of real estate documents, like title companies, law firms, and banking institutions? How has e-recording changed the process for submitting documents, and should submitters be doing anything differently? Yes, Kevin, for the submitter side, actually, it's, it's changed their world significantly. You know, they no longer need to f print a physical document or mail a document. Uh, it saves them a considerable lot of time and money. Um, let's walk through an example. Um, whether they're uh, sending in a document, whether it's U.S. mail or overnight shipping, you know, they send it into the county, and it could be rejected for some reason. Uh, and if it were rejected, what has to happen? The county then has to take that document. They have to send it via U.S. mail or overnight shipping back to the submitter. Obviously, there's cost and time involved in that. Right now, with electronic processing, what they can do actually, since it's web-based, is they're able to actually go on that, when they, when they file that or you start to record that document, they'll know in many cases why that document's been rejected by the county, and they can correct it right there and then. Um, so actually, uh, e-recording saves them a significant amount of time and money. No longer need to write a check. They no longer need to ship it. Um, and they're able to get their document recorded very quickly. So if a recording office or a document submitter is not yet e-recording, how do they get started? For the, uh, the county recorder's office or the clerk's office, it's a very quick process. Um, today many of them work with the Land Record Management System or an LRMS uh, and we're connected with them. Corporation, Services connect, Corporation Service Company is connected with them today as well. Um, and many of them they just turn on an e-recording module and they'll be up and running uh, to accept e-recording today. Uh, the other option that takes place is that if they don't have that LRMS relationship, um, we can help them with something called iRecord and get them up and running, which is a web-based system as well. So Scott, what about the submitters? How easy is it for them to get started with this e-recording? Mm -hmm. You know, from the submitter side, Kevin, they can be up and running same day. I mean, it is a web-based system. Uh, they can be trained very quickly, uh, and that we actually can get a document through that same day with them. Scott, what are your predictions for the future of electronic recording? Aside from a more widespread adoption of e-recording, what are some other changes that we'll see? Kevin, I think you did touch upon it. I mean, really, um, we're going to see more and more uh, states and counties embrace e-recording. Um, that is number one. Um, I think you'll also will start to see is there different document types that will come into place. Uh, so you may see business licenses and permits. We may see motor vehicle documents being accepted court documents that are e-recorded and so forth. And we're seeing some of that already, but it will be more and more widespread. Um, I also think that you, there's perhaps you may see a couple of states that might make e-recording mandatory process. 
Well, Scott, thanks again for joining us today. Uh, we've learned a lot about document recording and, and how things are transitioning to an electronic process. And it seems like there's a lot of benefits both for the recording jurisdiction in addition to all the different submitters like law firms, title companies, and banking institutions. So we're excited for the changes in the industry and grateful for your time. Thank you. For more information about e-recording, visit our website at www.erecording.com.